What is going on everybody? It's Medicosis Perfectionalis where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my endocrinology playlist. In previous videos we talked about the endocrine glands and the embryological origins of these glands such as the hypothalamus, anterior pituitary, posterior pituitary, the thyroid, the parathyroid, the pancreas, the adrenal cortex, the adrenal medulla. Then we talked about the endocrine hormones such as growth hormone, prolactin, somatostatin, oxytocin, antidiuretic hormone, FSH, TSH, ACTH, LH, the thyroid hormones, the parathyroid hormone, insulin, glucagon, and somatostatin, aldosterone, cortisol, adrenal androgens, and the catecholamines. After which, we discussed endocrine pathologies, such as prolactinomas, craniopharyngiomas, pituitary adenomas, dwarfism, gigantism, acromegaly, hyperthyroidism versus hypothyroidism, Graves' disease versus Hashimoto thyroiditis, insulinomas, glucagonomas, somatostatinomas, gastrinomas, and VIPomas. And today, it's time to talk about hypoglycemia, a condition of low sugar in the blood. Click the like button, click the subscribe button before I start sweating. This is my endocrinology playlist. Please watch these videos in order for maximum understanding and retention, not to be confused with my patient's urine retention. The classic story of endocrine inc. It has a CEO, a general manager, a bunch of employees which have to listen to the GM, and some independent contractors which do not care about the GM. If you wish to see more videos like this in the future, drop your favorite occupation emoji in the comments. The CEO of Endocrine Inc. is your hypothalamus. Your general manager is the pituitary. The three employees that have to listen to the anterior pituitary include the thyroid gland, the adrenal cortex, and the gonads. But the three independent contractors that do not care about the pituitary and are not influenced by it include parathyroid instead of thyroid, adrenal medulla instead of adrenal cortex, the pancreas instead of gonads. How does the anterior pituitary talk to the thyroid gland? By means of thyroid stimulating hormone, which is a hormone that stimulates the thyroid gland. How does the pituitary talk to the adrenal cortex? By ACTH, adrenocorticotropic hormone, the hormone that talks to the cortex of the adrenal. And how does the anterior pituitary influence the gonads? By means of FSH and LH, the follicle stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone. Today we're talking about hypoglycemia. Insulin is not under the influence of the pituitary. Glucagon is not under the influence of the pituitary. Epinephrine is not under the influence of the pituitary. But cortisol is under the influence of the pituitary. And cortisol can control blood sugar. Too much cortisol causes too much blood sugar, whereas a decrease in cortisol is going to drop your blood sugar. Next, the most important topic in biochemistry, the insulin world versus the glucagon world. Insulin stan versus glucagon stan. Insulin world versus glucagon world. Insulin is anabolic, but glucagon is catabolic. What does anabolic mean? To build up and catabolic to break down. This is where you get the word catastrophe from. It's a total breakdown. And this is where you get the word anatomy from, which means to cut you up. I will never do this to you because I love you. Insulin is a builder. Glucagon is a destroyer. Insulin is the hero of the feeding state, but glucagon is the hero of the fasting state. Not just fasting, but fasting and starvation. Insulin land, glucagon land. Anabolic, catabolic. Anabolism, catabolism, endergonic, exergonic, needs energy. Energy goes into the system, which means it requires ATP, it absorbs ATP. But the process of catabolism is exergonic, where energy is expelled. It releases ATP. Feeding state versus fasting state. What do you mean when you say insulin is anabolic? It's protein anabolic, glycogen anabolic, and fat anabolic. It's going to build up proteins, it's going to build up glycogen, and it's going to build up triglycerides. How do you build up proteins from amino acids? Hashtag proteogenesis or protein synthesis. How do you build up glycogen? From glucose, hashtag glycogenesis or glycogen synthesis. Say thank you to your glycogen synthase. How do you build up triglycerides from free fatty acids, hashtag lipogenesis or lipid synthesis? Say hi to acetyl-CoA carboxylase, please. How about glucagon? And by the way, it's not just glucagon, it's glucagon and his friends. 
who are glucagon's friends cortisol epinephrine and to a certain extent thyroxine these hormones tend to be catabolic glucagon is gonna break down your proteins into amino acids hashtag proteolysis or proteolysis take some of these amino acids and convert them to glucose this is called gluconeogenesis genesis is formation of glucose from new sources gluconeogenesis what do you mean by new sources non-carbohydrate sources oh that's new it is new to make glucose from amino acids to make sugar from proteins that's new what is old to make sugar from sugar glucose from glycogen small sugar from breaking down big sugar how do you break down the big glycogen to small glucose by glycogenolysis say hi to glycogen phosphorylase glucagon is fat catabolic it breaks down the big fat triglycerides into smaller fat free fatty acids hashtag lipolysis say thank you to your hormone sensitive lipase anytime you break down fat ketone bodies are going to emerge and this is called ketogenesis what are the ketone bodies in the human body three main ones acetone acetoacetic acid and beta hydroxybutyric acid if you wish to download these doozy colorful notes go to metacosisperfectionatus.com i help you learn understand and pass exams if you want me to personally tutor you reach out to me on my website charles dickens said it was the best of times it was the worst of times it was the age of wisdom it was the age of foolishness it was the epoch of belief it was the epoch of incredulity it was the season of light it was the season of darkness it was the spring of hope it was the winter of despair it was the land of anabolism it was the land of catabolism it was the age of proteogenesis it was the age of proteolysis it was the epoch of lipogenesis it was the epoch of lipolysis it was the season of glycogenesis it was the season of glycogenolysis it was the spring of anti-ketosis it was the winter of ketone bodies so when insulin goes up your blood glucose decreases because insulin pushes the glucose into the cells and away from the blood but when glucagon is high your blood sugar will rise and this is called hyperglycemia so insulin causes hypoglycemia but glucagon causes hyperglycemia why don't they teach biochemistry like this in medical school because most professors cannot tell the difference between their butthole and a hole in the ground to learn more about insulin i have a special video titled insulin in my physiology playlist first definitions of hypoglycemia what is hypoglycemia it's when your blood sugar is low lower than what lower than 70 milligrams per deciliter or lower than 3.9 millimoles per liter so what is the normal then the normal for fasting serum plasma glucose is 70 to 99 milligrams per deciliter and for the weird people that use these units it ranges from 3.9 to 5.5 millimoles per liter that was hypoglycemia less than 70 or less than 3.9 how about serious hypoglycemia even lower less than 54 or less than three how about severe hypoglycemia it is severe enough that it's requiring intervention it's like when your father and your uncle had an intervention for you because you were a naughty boy reactive hypoglycemia what does that mean it means that even though my plasma glucose is okay i still have symptoms of hypoglycemia this is crazy and reactionary demographics type 1 diabetes patients can develop hypoglycemia type 2 as well which one is more likely type 1 is more likely about 60 to 320 episodes per 100 patients per year but in type 2 it's 35 which is way less than 60. causes of hypoglycemia risk factors and precipitating factors of hypoglycemia type 1 diabetes type 2 diabetes mellitus what else medications such as the insulin secreta goes what does that even mean it means that these medications tell your pancreas to do what to secrete insulin and when the pancreas secretes insulin insulin is going to push the glucose into the cell and away from the blood leading to low blood sugar or hypoglycemia these insulin secretagogues including the infamous sulfonylureas and miglitinides alcohol can lead to hypoglycemia serious sickness such as sepsis or organ failure for example hepatic failure cardiac failure or renal failure hormone deficiencies 
decrease glucagon because glucagon used to raise the blood sugar. When glucagon is low, it decreases hypoglycemia. Do you remember glucagon's friends? Oh, epinephrine and cortisol. When they are low, there is less catabolism, which means there is less breakdown of glycogen to glucose, which means that there will be less glucose in the blood. Next, endogenous hyperinsulinism. My pancreas, for some reason, is making too much insulin, such as insulinoma, such as insulin autoimmune hypoglycemia, or functional beta cell disorders. Remember that the beta cells are the pancreatic cells that make insulin. Signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia. We have early symptoms, late symptoms, and symptoms of prolonged hypoglycemia. Early symptoms. I'm pale. I'm sweating. I'm anxious. My heart is racing, my hands are shaky, and I'm hungry as heck. Why would I be hungry? In order to eat. Why do you want to eat? To raise the blood sugar. Besides hypoglycemia, can you mention the causes of tremors? Let me know your answer in the comments. Late symptoms of hypoglycemia include altered mental status, delirium. Whether you have hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia, you can suffer delirium. Whether you have hyponatremia or hypernatremia, you can have delirium. Next, seizures, coma, and apneostic breathing. See my pulmonology playlist, which will take your breath away. Symptoms of prolonged hypoglycemia. We have irreversible brain injury because it's prolonged. Because uh, I don't know if you noticed, but your brain loves sugar. And when the sugar is too low for too long, I can get irreversible brain injury. Cardiopulmonary arrest and death. How can we diagnose such a disease? Clinically by the Whipple's triad of hypoglycemia. Not to be confused with the Whipple's procedure or Whipple's disease. These are totally different concepts. What is the Whipple's triad of hypoglycemia? It's a triad of 1. Symptoms of hypoglycemia, such as sweating, dizziness, tachycardia, palpitations, pallor, etc. 2. These symptoms occur when I'm fasting or when my blood sugar is low. And we can actually measure this. And 3. The symptoms are going to improve when I eat or when the doctor gives me sugar or glucagon to raise my blood sugar. That's the Whipple's triad. When you see these three findings, this points towards hypoglycemia. Next, review the medications because many medications can lead to hypoglycemia. For example, sulfonylurea, megalitinides, and don't forget the drug alcohol. Labs, we need to measure serum glucose, serum insulin, the C-peptide, the pro-insulin, and the ketone bodies, such as acetoacetic acid and, more importantly, the beta-hydroxybutyric acid. Remember that insulin is anti-ketosis, but diabetic patients do not have insulin activity, which means they develop ketosis and ketoacidosis in some cases. Imaging, CT scan, why? To look for insulinoma. Here's an algorithm to help you diagnose the cause of the hypoglycemia. If you find the symptoms of the Whipple's triad, which means I have the palpitation, the pallor, and the tachycardia, and the other symptoms of hypoglycemia, when my blood sugar is low and the symptoms improve when I take sugar, then this is hypoglycemia. Why is it happening? Review the patient's medications history. Is the patient taking any of the medications that cause hypoglycemia, for example, sulfonylurea? Bingo, you got it. Make sure to measure the dose of that medicine. You can measure the level of the medication in the blood or the urine to establish the connection between the medication and the hypoglycemia. Once you found the culprit, you can either stop the medication, replace it with another one that does not cause hypoglycemia, lower the dose, ask the patient to take a snack, or do something, goddamn you. But no, what if the patient is not taking any medications that lower the blood sugar? then you need to measure the insulin and the C-peptide. If both of them are high, this means insulinoma. But more commonly, the patient is taking sulfonylurea. I mean, why suspect a tumor when medications are more likely? Megalitinide can also do the same. Insulin, autoimmune hypoglycemia, and functional beta cell disorders are diseases that can lead to high insulin and high C-peptide. And of course, when the insulin is high, my blood sugar will be low. What if both insulin and C-peptide are low? This is an end organ failure, such as liver failure, heart failure, kidney failure, or hormone deficiency. Remember these anti-regulatory hormones, the glucagon, the epinephrine, the cortisol? 
which is the catabolic team. If they are low, this can lead to hypoglycemia and some tumors, but not the insulinoma. What if insulin is high but C-peptide is low? Oh, this patient is taking too much exogenous insulin. We call this factitious insulin disorder or surreptitious insulin use. Believe it or not, an occupation that is vulnerable to this is pharmacists. Why? Because they have easy access to insulin. And some of these pharmacists are reckless and unhinged. Personally, I would rather push a viper down my shirt than consult a pharmacist. But I digress. Do you want to learn more about insulinoma? I have a special video on this topic. It's called insulinoma. And you can find it in this endocrinology playlist or in my oncology playlist, which talks about, you guessed it, tumors, which means any word that ends in OMA except Oklahoma. Treatment of hypoglycemia, treat the underlying cause, stop the offending medication, keep calm and eat a snack. And then if that is not enough, we can give you dextrose or we can give you glucagon. Glucagon is going to raise your blood sugar. Let's summarize everything you need to know about hypoglycemia in one minute. The patient has a history of type 1 diabetes or type 2. The patient is taking sulfonylurea, has an insulinoma or an organ failure, such as hepatic, renal or cardiac. Symptoms and physical exam findings. Early symptoms of hypoglycemia, pallor, sweating, anxiety, tremors, hunger and palpitations. Late symptoms of hypoglycemia, altered mental status, delirium, seizure, coma and apneostic breathing. Prolonged hypoglycemia can lead to irreversible brain injury, cardiopulmonary arrest, and death. How can we diagnose hypoglycemia? The Whipple's triad, review the medications of the patient, order some glucose, insulin, pro-insulin, and C-peptide, and CT scan for the insulinoma. Treatment, treat the underlying cause, take a snack, take glucose, pills, or tablets, inject glucagon or dextrose. That was hypoglycemia in one minute. Here is a pro tip for the pharmacology connoisseurs out there. When you study beta blockers, one of the side effects of beta blockers is that they mask the symptoms of hypoglycemia. What in Zeus's butthole does that even mean? First, look at the symptoms of hypoglycemia. What do they include? They include sweating, they include tremors, and they include palpitations. So, when your blood sugar level drops, how does your body know? How does your body alarm you and notify you? By sweating, by palpitating, and by tremoring. But if you take beta blockers, what do they do? They inhibit palpitations, sweating, and tremors. So, if you take beta blockers, even if you develop hypoglycemia, you're not gonna notice and you're gonna die in peace because you did not feel the alarm. That's what we mean by beta blockers can block or mask the symptoms of hypoglycemia. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Do you want to learn about the different types of insulin and how to calculate the dose of insulin? Do you want to learn about thyroxine, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, dihydrotestosterone, and more? Download my endocrine pharmacology course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. To learn about all the drama that takes place in your kidneys, proximal tubules, loop of Henle, distal tubules, collecting ducts, and more, download my kidney physiology course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. My courses come with videos, notes, and cases. If you value what I do, help me make more videos by supporting the channel. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash medicosis. There are more than 700 premium videos available on this channel when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo. Go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases, or if you would like me to personally tour you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine, chemistry, math, and physics make perfect sense.